Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Richard Spade Jr. seen us, I mean, they barely at all, well, you barely at all, for me, really barely at all. Oh, thanks, guys, you can go. You don't have to stay up here. <laughs> oh, wait, I get it. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. The band no. won, the band won. Oh, we won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. There's nothing I can do. One is every time the cars never gets old. It's so applicable right now. Um, thank you. Thank you, Bro Mike. Thank you, band. Thank you, people. Thank you, Robert. Yes. Thank you, Richard. Um, you know, I've got, I'm going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag, or out of the box, as it were. <laughs> Fine, because the cat's about to suffocate. Richard and I finally have merchandise, or merch, as it's we called. We host a podcast. We host a podcast. Anybody listen to the podcast? And now you can have your very own two full, full beers. beers. The Robin Rich Supernatural Then and Now review system right there on your person. This is just sent to us by our producer. And so we're just finding this out for ourselves. Yeah, we're just seeing this stuff. You listen time. to the uh, closing credits, you might hear us yell, What's up, Booty? For Trey Booty, our sound engineer. And for those of you that don't know what we're talking about or don't know who we are, that's Rob Benedict. Now, this is Richard Spade Jr. Right. And we were on Supernatural. Back in the day. Yeah. Anyways, uh, you may have heard of it. Uh, anyway, we do a podcast called Supernatural Then and Now, where we, uh, it's a rewatch podcast. We're watching the show. Or watching it for the first time. We're watching, we're watching it for the first time. And we're talking about it. Rich, what do you got there? Well, this is also, we have something else. So we're in season four, Supernatural Then and Now. We just started airing season four. It's exciting. And now we finally released merch. As you see, Robert is holding up the back of the t-shirt, which is not as sexy as the front. The two full beards. There you go. And if only we had a bag. Oh, wait, we do. Rob's holding it right there, looking very natural in his What's Up Booty Supernatural Then and Now. It's spring has sprung in this new collection as Rob's wearing the ageless look of the handbag. Going to an event, going to a picnic, going to stay at home. This bag is perfect for any occasion, any, any spot, any place, any time, anywhere. And oh no, I'm shirtless. Not anymore. You've got a Supernatural Then and Now Two Beard shirt. Rob is going to hold it up instead of the bag in favor of the shirt to go, wow, look at that. Your friends might not know what the hell you're doing, but those who know will know. And on top of that, to like dress it up even further, Robbie, you've got this I Heart Stan button, which is very confusing to me personally because uh, Stan is sort of a, a overly aggressive fan, I think that's what that's yeah. called. But, but it means supernatural then and now also. And to really seal home the creepiness of it all, Steve made the heart out of a beard, so it looks like a fur eagle or a merkin. I'm not sure what it looks like, but the point is, you can, you can wear this loud and proud. It's doubly good, it's doubly good if you've got a boyfriend named Stan. Yeah, but listen, if you break up with Stan, don't lose the button. I mean, don't lose the like, button. Just power through and just give it a new meaning. Um, all right. There you go. Gear, supernaturalthenandnow.com. That's the website, supernaturalthenandnow.com. Get your merch. Get your merch. There you go. Thank you very much. That was our ad. Our 
Same with plug. Same as plug. Hope you're listening to the podcast. Who here is listening to the podcast? We've been having there. You should listen to the podcast. That's you know why? Because it's free. It's free. You know why else? Because it's us. You know why else? Because it's supernatural. I mean, I don't know what else you need other than free us and supernatural. Uh, and what? Cars for kids. Cars for kids. Man, if we don't get sponsored by cars for kids, we've done something wrong. Uh, let's, let's take some questions, Robbie. What do you say? Let's do it. All right. Start over there. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I would like to know what your first celebrity crush is. Who were they? First celebrity crush, Rich? Marie Osmond. Oh, wow. Taking it way back. Well, I was a, I was a child and she was on the TV. Yeah. That would be followed closely by uh, Daisy Duke. Okay, was same, up there. yeah. Um, I would say my first celebrity crush right was Marianne on the Gil- Gilead Island. Yeah, yeah, Marianne. And oh, boy, I found out uh, that my mom actually knew her in college. What? After my crush. Oh. And mom had her over to the house, and I got to meet Marianne. Don Wells? He Don Wells, yeah. Was a good friend of my mom's, and uh, I got to meet her. Wow. Uh, and then also... Uh, Let me ask you this. Yeah. Charlie's Angels, the original Charlie's Angels. Okay. Who, who was your... You got Farrah Fawcett, no. you, got, and you got Cheryl Ladd, and you got uh, Jacqueline Smith, and you got Kate Jackson. <sighs> Cheryl Ladd, maybe? Huh? There, look, there's no no losers in this. Uh, I can't remember. Band. Who's the brunette? Well, that was Cheryl. Uh, uh, Jack. K- Kate Jackson had short black hair. Her. And uh, uh, the, uh, who's the other? I just tried. I said her name forgot. Jacqueline Smith. Jacqueline, Jacqueline Smith had the long black hair. I was all. I was a Kate Jackson person. Kate Jackson. Yeah. Kate Jackson. Look at us. Look at us. Kate okay, Jackson guys. Uh, who, who else? The oldest uh, Brady Bunch sister, Marsha. Marsha. Yeah. Marsha. 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 Yeah, yeah, cute. Trying to think of uh, who else I might have had a crush on back in the day. Oh, well. Yeah, and we're so dating ourselves. <laughs> hey, those are the shows we watched. You know what? It's actually good because we're talking about stuff when we were like kids, and, and it'd be weirder if, like, right now, like, boy, I love that person on whatever. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, we're, <laughs> I, love, yeah. I love that young 20 something on that show. Creepo. Well, that Jensen Ackles. Um, oh, that Jensen Ackles, he's a dreamboat. That Jared Brad got the lucky. There's a tree I'd like to climb. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. I'd like to tie a rope to that mofo with a little, little swinging. Stop. Put a little tire on it. Stop. Have a picnic under it. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Maybe dip my toes into the Stop. nearby pond. Stop. Hey, do you listen to the podcast? Misha Lake. Oh, here's a t shirt for you. What? Rob's giving away the store. It's a fire sale. Rob's going crazy. I think you brought back my Bobby. Um, I think you brought back my Bobby. I think you brought back my Bobby. Oh, let's take a question over here. Okay, so both of you are unique in the show because you can you both play one character with different roles essentially. With you know, Gabriel, he's also Loki, the trickster. Chuck, you're also you know the um, omniscient. Um, God, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, what is your favorite, like, role of the character that you have? And how do you differentiate between, you know, being Chuck and being God, or being Gabriel and being Loki? Like, is there a difference, like, is there a difference to you? Or is it just, it's just the same character? Rich? (laughs) I... Um, I don't really have a favorite out of the three. I think I think I will say this as an as an actor who's done a lot of guest star roles in my career. Uh, when do you get the chance to be given a guest star role that is this deep and gratifying and, and layered? I mean, it, it never happens. So it's been an amazing journey to be able to play a character that has multiple personalities, if you will, multiple, multiple layers, multiple versions of itself. Um, so I like I like all parts of that. I don't have a favorite because getting to do something different and slightly different or very different with the characters is an amazing opportunity. It just doesn't happen uh, much. In terms of the characters being different, I think the characters are different it, it, just by the by design. You know, the writers sort of wrote different traits in for each set of characters. Um, especially when you got to for for my character, I know Rob's story arc really uh, evolved over time. But you know, when they did. Unfinished Business, which was season 13, and we really got to know the backstory of how 
Trickster pretended to be Loki and why he pretended to be Loki and what he was doing and how that all worked out, or Gabriel, excuse me. And I mean, I think it's just so, such a deep, rich writing by the writers that it was, that it's just different by design. So then, obviously, then the wardrobe department changes it up, and you change the way you play it because you're you're driven by different reasons now. And so, it, it, inevitably, they're all different. It, it, nothing is ever the same. No two people, no two characters are ever the same. Um, and I think that's intrinsic in that there are different characters, but also really well thought out and really well delivered by the writers to us, so that we can then play with it and have fun and, and add our own choices to to differentiate those characters even further. Yeah, I mean, I think you make a, a good point. I, I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I, I, I liked all the different faces of Chuck that I was able to play, and I'm very thankful that I, that I got to play it for so long that I saw it through all these different phases. Um, and, you know, when, when they introduced the God part of Chuck, that was a good challenge for me to try to still keep it Chuck, but also, you know, um, now having this big entity to play, um, which like Rich said, like it's not every day that, you, that you're able to step into a role and then and have it grow into this, this you know, such a big uh, entity. And uh, I, I think that like, that, you know, I think if, if you, I, I might, some days I might say like, I really, I like the old Chuck. I like the Chuck that was sort of drinking in the corner of his room and writing the books, you know, but, I, I loved it, like, by season 11, Chuck, that I got to be, uh, you know, that, that when he kind of came out as God, um, I knew the character so much better then that I really, it was easier for me to then play it with this new layer on top of it. And uh, and then when he went bad at season 15, um, again, it was like, I had already built the model and, and gotten it to this place, and now to sort of, now add this other layer, it was, it was, I would never have been able to do that in season four, so um, I'm glad that I sort of I got to watch it evolve. So I don't really have a favorite, really. I just am so thankful I was able to play it, and thankful that I was able to play a character that was so multi-layered. And certainly, being able to play the role of God was uh, a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and uh, still don't feel worthy of it. But uh, I was very thankful for it. Thank you for your question. Appreciate it. You. What is a fun story or fact about yourselves that you can tell us? Fun well, story. That's a very narrow question. That could be. <laughs> fun story. Fun story about ourselves. Fun story or fact. Or fact about ourselves. Fun story. Fun story. Or fun fact. story or fact. Fun story. Fun story. Fact. Fun story. <laughs> fun story. fact. Uh, well. This one weekend you annoyed everyone. Um, there's, there's a lot. I mean, we have lots of so funny. So many facts. Yeah, lots yeah. of facts. <laughs> We're both uh, bipeds, both bipeds. Bipeds, yeah. Uh, uh, we both carry on vegetative functions, uh -huh. uh, including digestion. Uh -huh. um, we're both over fifty. Both over fifty. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Both under, both under five nine. Both under. Both five under five nine. nine. <laughs> both, both shorter than the average American male. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And both under fifty five. Both under, both under fifty five. Um, both, uh, both uh, licensed drivers. Both licensed both, drivers. Uh, we both held, hold licenses in the state of California, interestingly. Yes, yeah, um, what a coincidence. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we kind of remark at that every now and then. We're like, oh, well, check us out. We're both from state. states that touch each other. Yes, we are. Um, and yet we refuse to touch each other. So I've you never go figure, the irony is. I've never touched I've never him. lost on never us. Touched him. Um, we both, uh, <laughs> much to Rob's chagrin, both our, <laughs> both our states Kind of, uh, we're on the wrong side of the slavery wrong issue. Wrong side of the slavery issue. <laughs> wrong side. And Rob, for years, didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I would brag to people and say, well, Missouri Compromise. And then I found out what the real Missouri Compromise was. Wasn't good. Doesn't look good. Doesn't look good on paper <laughs> at all. Tough no. to find out. The word compromise, you're thinking, good for them. And then you yeah. read what they were willing to give up. Like, and, oh, that's oh no, 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 no. Not good at all. Um, both, uh, both have uh, hair on our head. Hair on our heads? And uh, that's a thing that we've always been uh, well uh, noted for. And both have, <sighs> stay with me here, hair on our faces. Yep, we do. Bearded, bearded people. Bearded. Until we shave and then we don't have, but then that goes away and then it grows back. Grows um, back, grows back. That's pretty funny. Yeah, these are, these are fun these facts. These are fun facts. These are fun facts. But that a lot of people <laughs> didn't know. Yeah, yeah, these, uh, yeah we, we're prone to... Uh, There's gotta be something that we could say 
That would be right. super fun. So, th something about each other. Right, yeah. I mean, uh, people I mean, know, people well, know. We, we've told a lot of the stories. A lot of stories have been told. People know that... Uh, a lot of fun facts. I have an un unhealthy affection for your wife. Yeah, that's a, that's a know that. one. Dude. All you gotta do is Google the restraining order. You can see that one. You can see uh, that, right. Everybody can see that. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, everybody knows that... Uh, that uh, on the TV show, it, it looks like if you're really leaning into the story, that maybe I have hooked up with your girl Ruth on the show. I mean, on the right, show. right, right. Just her character. On the, on the character. <laughs> the character yeah, that was fun. That was really fun. That's a fiction. It never yeah, had. It's, it's never fiction. Had. It's felt real, but yes. I think, well, I think we really sold it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you did. You just did. committed to that whole uh, backstory. That's you know that's uh, yeah that's years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's just uh, so many. Fun. But besides that. Yeah. That's about it, you know, it's about, uh, that's about it, that's, that's about all I know. That's all the facts I got, I mean, um, Rob has a brother. I have a brother. A fun fact. Yep, Rich yep. has two sisters. I have two sisters. Yeah. For those keeping track at home, two. I also have two sisters. Two sisters, yeah. yeah. Rob's, uh, Rob's the youngest of, of five. That's right, four. But, uh, yeah. No, there's, uh, there's, there's five. Another? Yep, I'm, there's count, I'm counting your mother. Oh. <laughs> Are you not younger than Vivian? I am. Okay, well then I, I'm right. So Vivian is Vivian's child? Then, okay. Um, <laughs> it is a fact that you're younger than your mother. Okay. It's about that. Richard likes to, here's a fun thing, Richard likes to say whose favorite Benedicts are. Yes, I do. <laughs> He's, that's a, he has a running list, and it's like, <laughs> my mom, my brother, my sisters, your children. My children, Calvin and Audrey, uh, my aunts and uncles. Eggs. Uh, eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Arnold. But yeah, Arnold. My, <laughs> my estranged father, who I haven't talked to since I was 12. Yeah, he's on the list. <laughs> he's on the list. About I'm me. Oh, Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch is up there. <laughs> he goes on the bottom, and then like a couple others were sort of reserved for other people. <laughs> I'm keeping that slot open. I'm keeping that slot open. And, and then me. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what a, I put up with, folks. That's a fact. That's what I put up with. That is a fact. Anyway, anyway thank you for your question. I hope if you'd like to see about. more of this kind of comedy, tune into our other podcast, yeah. Kings of Con. <laughs> we talk like idiots. We do, and you'll, you'll learn nothing, but you'll have fun in the process. Thank you very much for your question. Here, have a bag. Have a bag. Have a sack. There goes Rob, hey, you know, gently placing his sack in her hands. Yep. There you go. What is the reaction, you people? <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. over here. Hi. Um, so, Rich, I saw like a couple weeks ago you posted on Instagram um, a place called Hottie and Lord. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just wondering how you, first of all, what it is and how you decided that God was Hottie and Gabe was Lord. Well, I, I, uh, I uh, yes. don't, I don't um, yeah. know what it was as a story I walked past. Okay. And I just and I figured I'd let the decision be left up to the people. Right. So I would say you have a you know a buzz in your a buzz in your bonnet for that guy. So he's hottie. You know what I mean? And other way, if I'm Lord, finally, you know what I'm saying? I've been taking a back seat the whole time as the son. But no, I just a store I was standing under. And I'm like, that's funny. So I took a picture and posted it. That's that's, yeah. about, that's about as much thought as I put into my Instagram post. But yeah, I, I I assumed that you were hottie and I was Lord. Thank you. Yeah. But, uh, Either way, it's a win. That, it was only just process of elimination. There's no, there's no real lose. There's no lose in that scenario. You're either a lord, a lord, or you're a hottie. The lord. Yeah. Or a hottie. A hottie. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, thank you for your question. It was barely a question, but I'm thanking you anyway. All right. You're right there. Hi guys. Hi. Um, I love you so much. Uh, thank you. My question is: You both have worked with Hollywood. Uh, what is your favorite part about working with Hollywood, Richard? I know you did the hot sauce episodes. How hard was that for you to do? That was hot, man. I'm gonna be honest. I, uh, we did one of those like uh, hot sauce testing things on, on the video. Uh, here's here's where I'll answer the first part of the question first. Uh, what do I like most about working with them? Their attention to detail. They are so good at what they do. I mean, I am so impressed with them as storytellers, as filmmakers. What they do, how they pay homage and honor the shows that they make videos for is so impressive. It's, it's not just two people who love their shows. It's two artists who take their hard work and, and passion and put into these very specific videos that are just so detailed and so well done and beautifully filmed and beautifully choreographed and it, it's just really impressive and then you go visit their set and you see the crew of four that they're doing it with and it's so 
it's so efficient, it's so small, it's, it's meant to do what it, what it does and exactly that, and they know how to run it, and they run it really well, and they have a great group of people who are longtime friends and crew members who work with them, and their families there. And it's just so impressive, because it's such a passion project. Each one is a passion project for them. It matters a lot, and they, they just, they execute at such a high level. And they're really good at what they do. They're good, they're great dancers, they're great at the great performers, at you the know? performers, and they really completely morph into the person that they're playing. They were doing four hours of makeup for yeah. that. For that uh, they're great at makeup. The Stranger Things one. Yeah. You know, she would get up and have to make herself look like Mike. Yeah. You know, for hours on end. And yeah. I think doing they do each other's makeup and help each other with yeah. that. It's just amazing. Yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah, I, I, I agree with everything he said. You know, just plus they're just very talented and, and really nice ladies. Yeah, really, really nice. Nice, nice family. And <laughs> travel size. Really easy to put them in an overhead compartment they're just to get where you're going. Yeah, they're, they're really small. Tiny little people. Yeah. Um, and yet so are we. And yeah, I, that's the irony. When if I say somebody's small, they're small. Because uh, I'm, no, I'm no great, <laughs> you know, form of a man. Um, <laughs> the other thing I was going to say is they are, they do everything they do with such a great attitude. Yeah. They're so pleasant and fun, and that's a you know it, they they treat their film sets like a film set. It's a very serious place of business to get done what they're trying to do, and they just do it so well in such a great spirit that it's fun to go work with them. Yeah, and the hot sauce thing was hot, and the weird thing is, so many of them weren't hot that I thought it was going to be a cakewalk, and then we got to something that wasn't even the hottest one, and it lit us up. And we did one of these hot sauce challenges. Yeah, yeah. Good grief, it was hot. Um, yeah. That's, I don't recommend it. There you go. Thank you for your question. But I do recommend watching their videos. Yes, their videos are great. Yo. Hi. You each guest starred on another one of my favorite shows, Alias, and each of you were the hunted, more or less, at, at uh, in a point. Uh, what was your experience with that, having kind of your the female being the lead of, of that uh, hunt, as it were? <laughs> Well, I, I'll answer first because my answer should be real brief. I was barely on that show. I was in like a scene, I think. So, and I, I don't, I don't think I even worked with uh, Jen Garner. I don't remember. Um, Greg Grunberg was. In, I worked with him. Uh, I just remember thinking it was cool because it was early in the sort of my exposure to visual effects, and they were making my leg explode at some point. So I had to go in, and they did a plaster cast of my leg, and then I wore a green sock or something, and then they they made it. I you know I. I didn't know what they were going to do at the time, but you know, we sort of prepped for it into this visual effect element, which I thought was really, really neat. Um, and it was a, at that time, it was a big hit show, so I was really excited to be on it and, and thought it was super cool. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't think I really worked with with uh, with Jen on that. I don't know. What was your bit? Uh, yeah, Jen. You know, Jen had uh, been on Felicity, so I knew her from back then, and she. Um, was she a regular on Felicity? No, she played uh, Noel's girlfriend from home, I think. Oh my god. And then they got married and uh, in real life. And so uh, when Alias started, we had like a, because it was also another J.J. Abrams show, and our show was a J.J. Abrams show, so we had like a pool party at Scott Foley and Jen's house. And um, yeah, it was crazy. Wait, Scott Foley married Jen Garner? Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, then they got divorced, and then she met Affleck. And I had no idea. But um, so is that how she ended up on? Yeah, Alias? I mean, it was all I mean, the same like, family. Yeah, she met JJ through yeah. that. He's yeah. like, oh, she'd be perfect. Exactly. For her. Wow. And she that's cool. Killed it. I mean, she was so great on that show. She was, you know, so such a badass and so hot, and just I think she was just so great on the show. So it was right. it was great to be part of that set and. Uh, my first bit was all with her, and it was really super fun, and it was kind of like homecoming for me because a lot of the crew was the same as Felicity, and then uh, and it was funny because at that, that time she was already divorced from Scott, and she uh, had just met Ben, and was kind of like giddy about it, and then when I came back at the end of the season and had my this another episode I was in, they were like full on about to get married, I think, but they were like full on a couple. Um, anyway, but she was great and. It was awesome. It was a great set and super fun to be there. That's, so that's crazy. How long were she and Scott married? Not long. What happened? <laughs> you, I could find out. Yeah, go backstage and find Foley. out. Come back Scott Foley, not Speedman. Foley. Oh, not your buddy. No. Oh, 
Oh, my buddy's Foley. I don't know Scott Foley. Who's yeah. Scott Foley? Yeah, he was another guy who was on the show Felicity. But Speedman's your buddy, like, you yeah. forever. Yeah. You're a really good friend. Yes. And so she wasn't married to Scott Speedman? Never. No. Well, that's a relief. Because yeah. I, I, I thought, <laughs> Rob had seen Speedman all the time. I've never heard that story. I'm like, wow, I kept that one. No, Scott Foley. Gotcha. Great actor, great guy. Great. He was also on Felicity. Felicity was like Carrie Russell, Scott Foley, Scott Speedman. Is Scott Foley related to Axel Foley? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> nope, nope. Because you know what? As Foley, not a real person. Yeah, it's a, it's a made up you? character that Eddie Murphy played in uh, oh, Beverly Hills Cop. Made up characters can't have uh, relationships? Not in real life. Okay. Um, you heard it here first. Well, did they? Um, so yeah, so uh, so yeah, that's. Uh, I bet Speedman's boned, man. It'd be fun to, to date Jennifer Garner. Yeah, but uh, Speedman no. missed his moment. I think we're all just friends, you know. Wrong we're Scott, all wrong Scott. Friendly did, with each did other. Did they ever like see her go? You married the wrong Scott. Um. No. No. Mm. Mm -mm. No, because they're not, of course, not not together anymore, and you know. If they're all friends. And, no, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I remember about this pool party we had is that um, no one was wearing clothes. No one was wearing clothes. I knew it. It was that um, uh, the first season of that show, the, the regulars on the show, on Alias, right. one of them was um, the actor who. It's, uh, Kevin Weissman. No, he was on it. But so was this actor. Scott Foley. <laughs> no. Greg Grunberg. Not at all. Yes. He was. But, yeah, but he's not who I'm talking about. This actor, who's, 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 uh... Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. And Bradley Cooper had just gotten to L.A. from New York, and he was... Is that real? Is actually Bradley Cooper? Yeah. yeah. Bradley Cooper. Wow, I just pulled a name out of my beehole, hole like Robbie's Drugs. <laughs> Why are, drugs in your <laughs> Why are you keeping my drugs in your bee hole? <laughs> no, you keep your drugs in your bee hole. Oh, right. And I keep Brad Cooper in my bee hole. Got it. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Okay. Let's in my bee hole. <laughs> in his bee hole. <laughs> <laughs> Above uh, the bee hole. I'm so now. sorry, everybody. He didn't take his meds before this con uh, convention. Yeah. So, what anyway. you do, boy? <laughs> I talked to Brad. Brad was a really shy kid. He'd just gotten in, in town from New York, and, uh, and that's the end of my story, really. It's just that at the time, I was, I was like, I can't believe Brad Cooper, who was at your pool party, and I just guessed Brad Cooper. That's amazing. I think you probably heard somebody say that. Okay. So I, I, yeah, and then we chatted because I was like, hey, yeah, you know, like I was like a know it all, like I knew, you know. Yeah. And then I just kind of later was like, oh shit, that was Bradley Cooper. Because now he's Bradley Cooper. Yeah, he's he's, uh, he's in your bee hole. Now Bradley Cooper's Bradley Cooper, and I'm stuck on stage with this guy. Bee, 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 bee hole. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need, boy? Oh, no. Shouldn't you be using a toy? I'm sliding. Wow. Who's, who asked that question? You? I'm going to give you a t-shirt. You I'm just want to leave stage. I do. <laughs> Supernatural. Was there another challenge you'd like to have with the characters or another plot line you'd like to follow? I, you know, I, I don't know if I ever did such a deep dive on it. There have been a lot of jokes thrown about over the years that I actually think would have been fun. It would have been neat if Rob, as God, had had a scene with me, Pellegrino, and, and Sebastian. Me, imagine, like, the, the son, son. father-son yeah. thing would have been a fun dinner sequence. The other thing that was pitched to us that we, was going to happen and then it just got shifted and didn't was that there was going to be an episode that you were going to direct right? and it was going to be God taking Sam and Dean to all these other universes. Oh yeah. All these alternative universes with other Sams and Deans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like one of them was going to be a crossover with Riverdale. Yeah, there was going to be... Yeah. Yeah, we were going to do that. I mean, it was in talks and the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. it was like, yeah, we, so we thought that was going to happen, and then it, it changed. It just became, you know, I know it why. It became the episode with me in front of the TV. Yeah, it became too big to, right. to pull off. Right. It would have been like a two-week shoot. But man, that would have been cool, huh? That would have been neat. 
Anyway, um, anything you wish we had done on the show? Oh, wait. I have to think. <laughs> I'm not good at the spot. Yeah, welcome to our world. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough out there. Yeah. But, yeah, would you like to have seen the scene with God and his sons? Yes, I yeah. think that would be really nice. That was something that I was wishing to see in the show. Like, yeah. be interesting. Take yeah. on it. Yeah. Well, just to be in a scene with him on the show would have been fun. Very right, cool. Oh well, another show, another time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You. Hey, this is my first con, so if I start to make no sense, I apologize. No problem. No problem. We haven't made sense this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, my question is more about Chuck becoming God, like when that happened, because first you see him as a prophet, and then Zacharias, uh, like, puts Dean in the future, and then you see Chuck being basically like the inventory dude. And then, at the end of season five, he just kind of vanishes in his chair. And then you next see him in like fan fiction at the end, and so I just want to know when the decision was made that Chuck is God. <laughs> well, actually, actually, he has an answer for this. I do. Yeah. So we, obviously, we just did the podcast and was able, so I can tell you when I first knew it was the end of season five, Swan Song, when I poof and go away, that was sort of Eric Kripke that created the show. That was his sort of way of sort of revealing that I was God really because I was the writer of the show in the same way he was the creator of Supernatural, I was the creator of the world within Supernatural. And so when he, he left the show and he kind of took me with him, it was a love letter to the show, the end of season five, and then poof, I went away. Um, and I, but I never knew the answer to the question, when did the writers know? And we just had, uh, we just did a podcast and we asked uh, Andrew Dabb, who was a writer who became, ultimately became the showrunner of Supernatural. Yeah, had his first produced episode in season four, just right. to give you a timeline. Right, so we just did a podcast with him, and I asked him that question, and you can hear his actual answer on the podcast, but I'll paraphrase it. Ba basically, he said that they didn't know when I first started, because they never know how what shape the character's gonna take. A lot of it has to do with, I mean, Richard and I both were supposed to be one-off episodes, and so they didn't know if I was gonna be any good, if it was gonna make sense with the guys, or whatever, so I think, when, it, when they get certain actors that they like working with or characters that are really working, they'll come bring them back again. And so I think organically, it, it, became, it became more that it looked like Chuck as the writer might be that. But at the beginning, they didn't know. And, you know, he said that there were writers' conversations in the writers' room where they were like, are we going to make God a writer? Are we those guys as a writers? So are we making God a writer? And they're like, yes, yes, we are. You know, it's their joke. But, uh, but that really, I think, was, you know, the impetus behind Chuck being God was Chuck as the creator of the show, being Kripke. Um, and that's what it was sort of at the end of season five. And then, you know, season, there were then, he said, don't tell anybody that you're God. I want the fans to have their own theories. And by season 10, that was Robbie Thompson kind of giving a wink to the audience, knowing that there are theories that I'm God. Because there were theories out there, is he God, is he God? And at conventions, I used to have to say, like, I don't know, maybe. You know, but uh, that was his sort of winking at that. Didn't Eric ask you not to... Yeah, he said, don't tell anybody. Let them have their own theory of what you might be. And so Robbie kind of was winking at that theory by having me say, not bad at the end of that show, uh, the 200th episode. And then when the darkness came on the show, it made sense to bring me back as God, and then it evolved into this sort of the second chapter of whatever Chuck was, you know. But um, anyway, that, that is that. And in terms of the future, it makes sense because in the future, Chuck's not God anymore. He's just, but he turns into MASH from, I mean, turns into Radar from MASH. You know what I mean? Just the guy sort of like back at the fort keeping right, track. Right, right, right. Um, anyway, and Rich has a present for you. Yeah, I'm giving you because you're new to the show. I'm giving you... A two, is it, that question is a two beard question. Two beard saying, question. Two full beard questions. So here you go. You now get your very own two full beard t-shirt. Thank you. Thanks for your question. All right. You. Um, what's your guys' most embarrassing childhood stories? <laughs> oh, man. I do have a lot of them. Um... Most embarrassing ch okay. Okay, sure, I'll say this one. I don't know if this is most embarrassing, but I don't know, yeah. at my fifth grade dance, I went with my girlfriend, who was in sixth grade. Mm. Nice. And if I showed you a picture of her, I think I've posted it before. She was a good 
six, seven inches taller than me. It looks like my mom brought me to the dance. She's literally in the picture we have, which I still have, I show a lot of people because it's so funny. She's like going the, like this with my shoulders. It looks like she brought her oh, kid to the hilarious. dance. So later in the night, I got so jacked up on like sodas and I was showing off because I used to do that. We're dancing and stuff. And there are these like streamers hanging down like that. And I went running at the streamers. I was going to like break through them, right? But I ran right into one of the poles oh, no! that was holding the streamer and it knocked me flat out. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> On top of the fact that I'm already a five foot tall, four, five, four, six, four, seven, maybe, with my giant girlfriend. Oh no. I impale myself. I can tell you for a fact that Catherine, my girlfriend, broke up with me weeks later because she realized that not only was it not cool, but it was not at all cool. So anyway, wow. yeah, that was one of the most embarrassing events. And I literally had the imprint of a pole on my forehead. Okay, I, I took me, I'm glad you, that's a brutal story, but I had to give you time to think of one for me. Mine was, well, one of my embarrassing moments as a kid is I hated horror things and I hated scary things of any kind and I went to a birthday party with all my really good buddies and I was probably a third grader or so third grader fourth grader and we went to a, a fair you know like those coming through town in Nashville and the Italian street fair I remember what it's called the Italian street fair we went to and there was a haunted house you know how those old haunted houses you know had the whir of the, of the engine that was running those things through it, and they had this horrifically gruesome painting of like a King Kong-esque monster and an alien and eating a severed arm. Like they're really gruesome, they're really aimed at teens, you know. And we were there, and I went there and saw that and immediately burst into tears in front of all my friends, and I was just mortified. Oh no! Yeah, and I remember the mom of the person who was at the birthday party was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm like, yeah, I, I was just paralyzed, paralyzed. Ended up having to get my parents to pick me up. That kind of reminds me of, of one of your boys a little bit. Yeah, they were younger. I just do not. I do not like horror things. I did not like it, and it oh, just man. that kind of it just killed me. Little Richie Spade. Man, Richie Spade did not like being scared. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, that's rough. That's really rough. There you go. <laughs> hey, thank you for let's get you a our, bag. Yeah. Thank you for forcing us to visit our trauma. Yes, exactly. And here's a bag for you. Thank you. Since we've opened, opened up our baggage, here's some bags for you. Um, um, we're down to buttons. We're, yeah, down, we're down to, to buttons. buttons. And let me tell you something. We had a whole plan. We're going to give some away tomorrow. It's not happening. Not, not happening. Because no. you guys are so cute. We have to give you gifts. Exactly. Hi, y'all. Um, so you guys seem to have so much chaotic energy, which I completely <laughs> adore and relate to on so many levels. Um, I was wondering, like, what maybe stories you have from like the Supernatural set or really just any set of you guys just going absolutely chaotic and just having a good time, even though it doesn't. It's not appropriate, but it's just... I don't know if I... I know it's going to be a boring answer. I don't think I've ever gone chaotic on a set. It's, it's a place of business. Like, you're there for a very specific reason. Especially if you're a guest star. Like, you're really not there to slow it down. And it... I, God, if I, as a director, some guest star showed up and started acting like I do on this stage, I would fire him. So, <laughs> in my need to not get fired, I mean, I'm trying to think of, like... What I will say is, like, that energy that we have, and I could speak for Richard, the energy that you have on stage is counting. You have an ability to funnel that into a, a supreme focus, so when he's on set directing, he's constantly in it and active. He's never like, you know, he's like, he's in it and even between the shots, he's talking to the actors or he's talking, getting to know the DP. You're, right. you're already, you know, you, uh, and I think for me, it's a little more chaotic than that on sets, but I do have a lot of energy. But I'm going to do, you're, you're not I've a got professional. A job professional to, I've got a job to do. Yeah, yeah it's all professional. Yeah. Um, it, it, I know it, it, it may sound boring, but I think Rob's right, is that you, you have these, this is a personality trait. You know, I'm, as you know, one of my, children has a hard time sitting still in a classroom. I'm like, yep, that's, that's for my gene pool, you know. Um, but it serves me well in what I do for a living. I, it's a common knowledge for anybody who works with me as a director that I never sit down. 14 hours a day, I don't sit down. Because there's, A, there's always something to do, and, and I like to be part of the process of getting it done. Um, so Rob's right, it does serve me well, and it serves as well as actors, because those are also 14 hour days. You're also having to memorize things and adjust to changes. Perfect example would be if Rob's doing a rich bait scene and I have this blocking idea, Rob might have thought of it completely differently. So now he's got to readdress in his mind on a on a moment's notice a whole different process. 
and then repeat it 60 times because everything you do on TV is rep repetitive. Um, so unfortunately, it's not really ever a pillow fight free for all, uh, but the energy does serve our careers well. Yeah, it's just, you just there's this, you know, rules when you're working, you're doing a job, but within those rules, you can be just... It's always fun. It's also always filtered chaos, I guess. And, you know, for me, uh, if I'm allowed to do improv, you know, if, the, if I'm working with a director who, or writers that don't mind for you to do a little improv at the end of a scene, or even within a scene, that's where I get a chance to sort of like... Well, look, use our Kings of Con for an example. Sure. Like, that was a, obviously super fun, a series we made with our friends, but it was incredibly professionally done. We were very prepared. And if Rob and I improvised something, when we said cut, we're like, oh, that was really funny. Let's keep that. And then when we turn around, I'll do it again, and I can respond, or whatever. And we'd also try to do cross coverage so that we could get anything that was a spontaneous joke would be captured. But there's a really weird method to making something look like there's no method, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know? yeah. But thank you for your question. Good question. You want a button? Yeah. yeah. Go down to buttons. buttons. But there's a beard. If there's a person named Stan in your life, <laughs> he's about to be really flattered. Thank you. All right, you. Hello. Hey. Hi. I was just wondering if you've ever considered performing God Was Never On Your Side by Motorhead for the Saturday Night Special. That's a good good thought. Um, I, I, you know, I... Uh, Do you know this song? No, I feel a personal attack a little bit. Uh, <laughs> no, I actually don't know that song, but it sounds, it sounds like an appropriate one for, for what eventually happened to Chuck. There's uh, another song that you, uh, I, with similar theme, that you, I was hoping you guys would perform, it's called, Hey Gabriel, you look great in those pants. Yeah, it's well, that's that another one. Be, uh, <laughs> and, uh, who did that one? <laughs> uh -huh, they were yeah. great. I love yeah. them. The early albums were yeah. especially. <laughs> really good. Uh, no, that's a, that's a funny one. I don't know that song. I'll have to look it up. I always thought a good song for Chuck would be What If God Were One Of Us. Right. That to me is a is a good song. But your song, What If God Were An yeah, Asshole, <laughs> sounds like a good one too. Sounds um, like a real toe tapper. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Thank you very much. You. Um, my question is, what is one random fact or like idea that you know of that anybody else would think is a total lie, but you can like Google it and prove it? We're back to the fact bit. A fact that people wouldn't believe, but you can actually Google it and prove it. Well, I'll give you the opposite of that. There's a fact that, there's a thing that Richard said years ago at a convention that's not true at all, but people believe it to be true, so much so that they've made t-shirts and bumper stickers, and that is that I don't like Perth, Australia, which is not true, it's not, never said it, never meant it, never thought it, but Richard has maintained this fact that Rob hates Perth, and if you, t I tell some people from Australia the story, and they kind of laugh, like they can't believe that, that, that this is a thing, I'm like, Google Rob hates, and Google will fill in Perth, and you'll see t-shirts, bumper stickers, stickers, calendars, about how Rob hates that, it. That's all true. Everything you say is true. And Rich is making money off of all of making it. Taste of all that. And, and the um, fact that I will share with you that's Googleable um, is that Rob hates Perth. And it's, you just Google it. I'm telling you, Google will fill it right in. I'll get one more question while we're uh, passing a button. What's up? I was just wondering what uh, you guys thought Chuck would do in the first months and years after he lost his powers. Oh, yeah, Rob, where are you going on your... What would Chuck do after he lost his powers? I feel like Chuck is at a gas station, like in the middle of nowhere. If they don't even have gas, there's no gas, it's not a working gas station, he's just there. But I feel like he's writing, like on a typewriter. So I feel like he's going back to being a writer, which is possibly, what, if he does anything well, maybe it's that. So that's what I'm hoping, is that he's at least writing, but he's sad, and he's really lonely. He misses the party. But that's what you get when you try to destroy Sam and Dean. Go give that man a button, you'll be the only dude who got one. And then do we, no other questions, right? Everybody's gone, we serviced everybody, nobody else, oh great. Thank you so much for being a part of our uh, fantastic uh, panel today. Thanks everybody. We appreciate all your questions. This is Richard Smith Jr. And that's Rob Benedict. Thank you. Thank you. Signing our merch. T-shirts, CDs. Great. 
and uh, and vinyl. If you uh, if you're not loaded up with with uh, Loud and Swain gear, prepare yourself for the concert tonight by getting yourself some Loud and Swain stuff and get ready for the concert now. Let's get right to.